Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, The Ninth Cup, where all of my readings focus on your soul's destiny and everything you can do to embody your soul's purpose. This is going to be a general reading for Leo, wherever you have Leo in your chart. If you're a Leo rising, sun, moon, or you have a stellium in Leo, that's three or more placements. This reading could be for you. I'm channeling energies for the Mercury retrograde in Libra and Virgo. Um, this is going to hit your second and third houses in your natal charts if you are a Leo ascendant. For those of you who are current subscribers, thank you so much for sharing your energy with me. Welcome back. For those of you who are new and just stopping by, thank you so much. My name is Karen Michelle Yearwood. I'm an intuitive guidance counselor, and I help people like yourself along the Ascension journey. So this Mercury retrograde, like I said, it's hitting the signs of Libra and Virgo. Um, I think I'm recording this on the 22nd, so I think uh, Mercury actually is headed into Virgo right now. Um, if not, so I think maybe in the next few days. Um, so it'll, it will hit the latter degrees of Virgo. Most of the retrograde season, um, well, Mercury retrograde, I should say, <clears throat> has been in Libra. So it's a, a heavy um, Libran uh, mercurial right retrograde. So there's some other transits that are affecting this Mercury retrograde. The Mars... Uh, Mars Venus square okay so that's tension between divine masculine and feminine we have Mars uh, trining Saturn and Aquarius we have a new moon in Libra we also have um, Venus and Virgo um, opposing Neptune and Pisces and um, I think that's it <laughs> there are so many well on top of all of those transits um, there are five other planets that are retrograde so there's just a um, heavy retrograde and also mercurial energy in the cosmos right now with both you know mars and venus being in mercury ruled signs mars and in v gemini um venus in virgo so that um is kind of adding flavor to what this uh, retrograde is doing again look at your chart um if you have a leo sun you know look at your ascendant and look at where you have virgo and libra in your chart those are the areas of your life that will be the most activated i um, study western astrology and i um, read charts in the whole sign system okay so let's get started leo i'm a leo moon so my fellow leos i'm gonna get one oracle from the star codes and then one from the um, enchanted map We'll get a two card spread looking at what to embrace, what to release, and then we'll wrap up with one other oracle. All right, so let's see what uh, Spirit has to share with us regarding this retrograde. This is from the star codes. We have second house. This uh, actually has come out in like, several other readings. Second house is the house of Taurus, but this is also, um, you know, again, if you're a Leo rising, <coughs> going to be your Virgo house. Okay, so for those of you, again, if you're a Leo ascendant, you have Virgo in your second house. That's a house of resources, um, the house of you know your self worth, your possessions, your money, your assets. So this is being activated. You know, there could be some things coming up in terms of you know the practicality of how you are using your money, right? How you're spending your money, how you're earning your money. Um, is it sustainable as well? That's actually one of the cards in this deck. Um, I think. I think the sustainability card is actually the Virgo card, but there is an energy here of sustainability. You know, there could be some themes or things coming back around with this Mercury retrograde that's just getting you to look a little bit more closely at how you're managing your funds, um, how you're choosing to earn more funds, right? If it's like, you know, choosing another job or um, doing like side hustles or side projects for additional um, capital, um, spirit is just kind of bringing this to the center, bringing this to the the front of what this re retrograde could be about for you the bottom of the deck is the sun right this is your card all right so you're ruled by the sun but this is illumination this is spotlight this is kind of you know what's front and center for you it's also the happiest card in the deck the sun in the major arcanas in the tarot deck is you know it's uh, bliss it's happiness abundance it's childlike energy so there could be something around that um you, you know, when it comes to your resources, there could be something around like having fun with it, right? Um, choosing to be playful with it, but also having to consider the practicality because it is the house, your house of Virgo, if you're uh, Leo rising. So Virgo really wants the structure, right? It wants the practicality, it wants to strategize, it really wants to do things um, in order. All right, so let's get an oracle from Enchanted Map and see what this oracle has to share. Oops. 
we have Ride the Wave. I think this came out for Sag and one other reading as well. <clears throat> Ride the Wave. So this is an energy of just kind of ebbing and flowing, right? So not getting too stuck in a uh, process, even though I know the second house for you is Virgo for Leo Risings. Um, and then, you know, obviously thinking about ways to make money does require some strategy, some, you know, putting things in place. But ride the wave. I think Spirit is really saying, like, ride the wave in terms of what your outcomes are. You know, don't marry yourself too much to what um, a particular outcome is or what you think uh, should be the outcome of your actions. Um, let spirit show you what you're capable of and what new opportunities and what new, um, I'm getting an energy of like, uh, capabilities, but it's more like talent. Like it's more what you're good at or what's resourceful for you personally. And that's going to be a lot of different things. This is a, a general reading. So there could be something where maybe you thought you couldn't monetize it or it didn't have value, right? So the second house is also the house of values. Um, like what you tangibly value there could be you know this could be possessions there could be something that you own that maybe you thought doesn't have much value to it but it actually is worth a lot right um and that's just kind of a small example of like how you know with riding the wave you could um again maybe be on an, a, a particular pursuit or endeavor and you're thinking it's going to have one outcome or you know people are going to perceive you a certain way or what you have a certain way but there could be something totally different about it and mercury retrograde does bring that up sometimes too you know a lot of readers will say you know glitches and miscommunication and things like that which is true but this could also uh, manifest for you in terms of like just unexpected reactions from people right um bottom of the deck for this one is listening this has come out several times as well so listening to spirits, listening to your um, inner guides, balancing yourself, and trusting yourself. I like it, Leo. I really do. Let's um, go ahead and get your two card spread. Um, I'm deciding what deck I want to use. Let's do the um, Souls on Fire deck for you, Leo. I think I use this for Aquarius, your polar opposite. So. Let's see. Let's see what spirit wants you to embrace during this Mercury retrograde. Oops. We have the Knight of Cups. I'll get one clarifier. Actually, let me shuffle. I, I wasn't feeling that. <laughs> let me shuffle this deck one more time. And the Queen of Swords. So embracing the Knight of Cups and the Queen of Swords. You know, embracing... Um, how can I say this? So embracing what people are bringing to you. Like, um, So you're a fixed sign, Leo. You know, your polar opposite is Aquarius. And the Queen of Swords is um, an air energy. Um, Mars is retrograde and Gemini and air energy, right? Saturn retrograde and Aquarius, this Mercury retrograde happening in Libra. So there's a, there's a lot going on in the air signs. And so there could be some rigidity in terms of how you're processing information. Um, again, this could be tied to what I was saying about the outcomes, right? Like wanting things to be a certain way. Like I said, you're fixed. Um, but with this Knight of Cups, this is an offer. This is somebody coming through, um, being very authentic with you. Um, could be several different people, right? Apply it to how it resonates. doesn't have to be just one person. It could just be the energy of like um, the, the presentations or the invitations people are coming to you with, the Knight of Cups, right? Which is more, like I said, authentic. It's more like from the heart. It's more vulnerable. Um, it's more uh, like not, it's... Uh, the opposite of technical right like there's something more like fluid about it and you're in the queen of swords energy <clears throat> right wanted to be analytical and things like that so with the embrace it's kind of like yeah you could be in queen of swords some of you could have a lot of air energy in your chart and that's beautiful energy but embrace a little bit more of this knight of cups energy um you know both cards are here but i'm thinking you know how i'm channeling this energy at least is that um it's kind of like honor honor one aspect of yourself by but also excuse me honor one aspect of yourself but also um open up to being another way as it relates to how people are approaching you so again this mercury retrogrades uh passing through libra and backing into virgo so libra is the sign of 
partnerships, right? Um, commitments, um, being in harmony, being in balance with others. So there could be some themes of that, right? And Libra is your third house, the house of communication, the house of Gemini, right? A mercurial house. So again, um, there could be another wave of invitations or offers, or, and this could be small scale. This could be just people just wanting to converse with you, just have conversation with you, just hang out with you, right? It doesn't have to be necessarily anything at work or contractual or, um, you know, like legally binding things. <clears throat> could be because that's Libra energy as well. But again, there's this energy of like being a little bit more receptive, right? Bottom of the deck here is listening, um, being more of an active listener versus um, a speaker. Um, sometimes the Queen of Swords likes, does like to speak, does like to overpower people. That's Shadow Side Queen of Swords. So yeah, this is what I'm having. Um, this is what Source is saying in terms of embracing for this uh, Mercury retrograde, this time period, which is until October 2nd. I don't think I said that in the intro. But we will have the Shadow period um, afterward. So there's that to consider. For releasing, we have the Knight of Swords. More swords energy here, and what else? And the Hierophant card of Taurus, a fellow fixed sign to you. <coughs> Excuse me. So, the Knight of Swords and the Hierophant in terms of what to release. Um, there could be some outdated value systems and beliefs that are um, lurking in. In your vicinity right or in some way of how you manage your life how you um do your day-to-day -day, right because again virgo is one of the signs of mercury retrogrades hitting so that has an energy of routines um but there's something here that you could be kind of married to so to speak and not marriage in the you know uh, uh obvious or you know straightforward way but married in terms of it's like you're committed to it and it could just be no longer beneficial for you um, the Knight of Swords is the, actually the fastest moving Knight of the deck. So this is um, pacing yourself. This is slowing down, you know, release the need to, um, you know, pursue and get answers right away. Um, that could be tied to a belief about yourself, right? Like you're, you're more successful or you're more um, abundant. You're perceived as smarter if you can have a response or have a problem solved more quickly than other people, right? You're kind of basing things on like the validity, validity, excuse me, and the speed of how you're getting them done. Makes sense. You're a fire sign, you're ruled by the sun. That's, you know, fast masculine energy. Um, but I think spirit is saying, you know, really release that because it could be the same thing that's blocking any other, you know, future abundance coming in. It could be the thing distorting you from um, getting clarity on your resources and your capital and your, you know, your sense of stability. Yeah, bottom of the deck is seven of pentacles, right? So which is the patience and planning, right? Seeing how you're building, taking stock in what you have built successfully, but then also thinking carefully about, you know, what's up ahead. I think seven of pentacles is... Oh no, you know what? The eight of pentacles is Virgo. I was going to say that's Virgo energy, but it is earth energy, the pentacles energy, right? So this is um, about slowing down, grounding yourself, thinking more um, strategically in terms of like how you're going to pursue something or move forward at something um, and, and not having so much, again, speed with things. And the, and the Hierophant card is earth energy as well. But again, I'm channeling more of the, the aspect of this card that's about um, beliefs and values. It's also an energy of institutions. So for some of you, if you have a lot of experience working in a particular field, right, a particular subject matter, um, it could be needing to change something about it, right? It doesn't necessarily mean leave, but change how you either view that institution or what you're doing in that institution, right? Um, thinking about how you either can get more value out of it or how um, its values are no longer like serving you there's something there with like what you're attached to what you're affiliated with and like values and belief systems there could be something changing um again mercury retrograde can bring up the things that not only are um <clears throat> need to be reviewed but things that um are ready for change things that are ready to be um revised all right so that's what i have there beautiful energy let's get your oracle this one is from the um shaman's dream oracle <clears throat> O 
overflow, overwhelm, and plenty. Overflow, which is overwhelm and plenty. This is kind of like, um, what's the other oracle? There's a oracle on another deck that is reminding me of this one. Um, shoot, what is it? It might be Milk and Honey. So from the Wisdom Oracle, Wisdom of the Oracle, the Milk and Honey card. Um, this is what this is how I'm having me think. Overflow, Overwhelm, and Plenty. So, and it's a seven card. So that's change. Um, and Libra is the ruler over the seventh house. So there's things up ahead, uh, Leo. <clears throat> Much abundance coming to you. You know, your polar opposite, your opposing energy. Aquarius has Saturn, retrograde. So there are lessons here. There's also, you know, um, you know, uh, experiences or opportunities to learn how to be more patient since Saturn is the God of time, you know, lessons, wisdom, restrictions. So it doesn't, might not feel so good. You know, I know I'm an aqua sun. So and Saturn has been, t you know, tap dancing all over my natal sun. So in the moment, it doesn't feel so great. But I think that that's, you know, prepping you for what's up ahead which is more abundance, which is more streamlined things, which is more resources coming in. Bottom of the deck, perfect storm is the courage to take, I'm sorry, the courage to step into life. And that's a 44, all right, angel number. 44 could be significant for some of you. The courage to step into life. You know, I think you have no problem doing that, Leo. You know, you are the sign of courage. You know, you're ruled by the sun, which is the um, ruler over the heart and solar plexus and the human body. So, you know, I think this is spirit just saying, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Don't forget to be authentically you. That's also, you know, standard high vibrational Leo energy, but be receptive to other people, you know, be receptive to change, you know, you're a fixed sign. So this Mercury retrograde could be just bringing in these opportunities where you can change or you can, um, you know, welcome things from others, um, you know, a little bit more receptively, right? And it's not threatening who you are and it's not saying that what you have to offer isn't valuable or you know um great or successful or good it's not anything like that it's just um there's there's things to glean from that right there's more to accomplish and um, take advantage of right in a in a great way in a positive way so this is what i have if something here resonates please like the video subscribe to the channel if you have not already i do hope to see you all in the next one and be sure to thrive bye